Thank you for joining us, Matt. Then, Morty, why don't you just carry on? Let's get running. Well, Matt, we, we're glad you, you show, you, you're here. Um, we did, we've been talking a bit about your background and what you kind of meant to the off-road racing world and the motorsports world in general. And, uh, you know, I think that the first thing we kind of want to do is get a little bit of background on how, um, you know, how, how you started us. You weren't like a lifelong off-roader like I was. You, you came in later, but you made a huge impact. Kind of give us a little bit of background where you kind of came from. Yeah, um, well, I, I moved to Southern California when I was 12, and uh, that was the 80s, so I got dropped right into this beautiful era of off-road racing culture, and, right? um, and you know, Mickey Thompson Stadium Racing was huge, and score racing was uh, uh, huge as well. So it was a pretty magical time to be a young male in, in Southern California. So, you know, it's, it's not, not hard to fall in love with it, um, which, you know, both me and my brother did uh, as young kids. And then uh, we grew up around it. And then later when I started Mad Media, um, we were predominantly doing work in action sports, but we're always looking at off-road and, and trying to figure out what the angle was and how we could work it. And so, you know, we, we started doing media work in the space and bringing our expertise to that world. And that led to success and frustrations. Um, and, you know, I, I just hit a point where, you know, I was trying to convince 70 year old men to have a Facebook page and a website for their, their race league and um, just modernize the, the business. And um, it, they weren't listening. So, we bought them in and started implementing, you know, our ideas and just more modern practices. Yeah. I mean, I think there, there's no doubt that, that it, it's safe to say um, as promoters, you, you are, I, I am, there's others that we've, we've kind of followed your lead in a lot of that thinking and a lot of that execution. It may not always be at the level you guys have, but clearly, you know, the investment in time, the investment in resources, the investment in brain power and, and what Mad Media does to own an event like the Mint has brought that race and, and the desert racing as a whole up to a lot higher in the mainstream, I think. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Marty. Um, we, we just tried to implement, you know, some of the ideas and, and experiences that we'd have that we had previously with events like X Games. You know, we were we were there for X Games one and had done work for um you know, different skate surf brands and, and ESPN. And so we, we were fortunate that we, we got to see the inside of that growth and, you know, not all of it was perfect. There was a lot of it that was messy and some of it failed, but, you know, ESPN has a great crew that runs X games and, you know, they were, they were smart. They figured it out. They figured out what worked and what didn't work. So, you know, we saw that and, and just, Again, you know, growing up watching motorsports on TV as a kid in Michigan and, um, you know, growing up and watching Wild World of Sports um, and watching the Ball 1000 and, and Pikes Peak and all these, you know, Monaco Grand Prix and all these amazing events and amazing, uh, uh, you know, TV production. We just felt like this is the way it should be, you know, this is such a dynamic um, sport, um, but it's, it's difficult to cover. So you, you got to put in the work and, you know, you, you certainly have to put in the money, um, to do it, but, um, you know, we just, we felt like the, the product was so good that it was, you know, really our opportunity to take it and, and, you know, uh, reach it, you know, get, get it, reach the masses. Yeah. I mean, so when I think about the mint 400, and the progression the last, I don't know, how long have you had it now? You've had it for how many years now? Uh, 12 years. Yeah, I was going to say, yep. So so the progression, you know, I, what I see some of the some best practices you guys are doing and that's kind of interesting to share is, you know, obviously the race is in the desert, but like the mid 400 of the old times, you know, you guys brought the contingency and the tech and all the hoopla downtown to, to Las Vegas, right where it was in the old downtown area of Vegas. I think that's a big area of success to bring media, to bring sponsors in, because you were in Las Vegas. The other thing that 
people don't understand is when they watch, I'll never forget Paul Fanna Racer. When he first watched the, the first Min 400, he watched live streaming. I think it was probably five or six years ago. So the amount of work it takes to cover a hundred mile loop in the desert with live cameras, I'm not talking about one camera at the starting line, we're talking about live production, helicopter relays, you know, cameras out on the race course, switchers, directors, a set, you know, a talent stage, all that. It, it, walk us through that because that's a big, big commitment. It, it's hard to, I mean, it's expensive and hard to do that. Yeah, I mean, all we're doing is we're taking what's traditionally done at a racetrack and we're doing it in a really remote area of the country. And, um, you know, but also like you mentioned, our racetrack is a hundred mile loop. So it, it's got a lot of challenges logistically, but, um, you know, we're passionate about this. So to us, this is a giant, you know, puzzle to, to solve and constantly improve and implement new technology. And, you know, we're, you know, personally like into that stuff. Right. So, you know, my entire team is, is always bringing, um, new solutions forward, whether it's, you know, camera systems or, you know, a different way to stream and push it onto the internet. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a big undertaking, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it, we live in a funny world because the expectation, the bar is set very high. Right. Yeah. So like you can't take a customer who sees, you know, a NASCAR race and the fantastic production that they do. They, they, that's what they expect if, if they're going to consume something. So they're not, they're not going to forgive us. There's no like, oh, hey, it's, you know, you guys are really remote, so you can half-ass it. Um, they, they expect the same thing, you know? So we do whatever we can to, you know, uh, constantly improve it, take notes from other uh, disciplines of, of racing, uh, you know, in, in other television shows. I mean, a huge influence on us on, on TV and live stream production has been the UFC. Um, you know, they do everything themselves, and it's very apparent, you know, everything from the script writing to, you know, the cameras to everything else. And, and, it, and it shows. Yeah, I mean, and, and this, uh, this, this constant, I want to kind of get your temperature reading on this, too. I think one of the things that the motorsports industry as a whole, and the, even the automotive industry doesn't understand about our culture, and you're, you're the, the, the next generation for that, but is that I always call it the evergreen locomotive, like off-road racing and off-roading as a culture appeals to young people. And, and I think that, I think you'd agree with that to some level. It, it hasn't, it doesn't have the, the aging out issue that other forms of motorsports are seeming to deal with right now. Yeah, no, in fact, we've been, we've been given, you know, two fantastic gifts over the last 10 years. One is, you know, the advent of the sport UTV, which has brought in, probably millions definitely thousands you know of new uh racers but um but on, in addition to that it's created casual fans because you know if if you're a guy who goes and buys a utv um and even if you're just riding for pleasure like you get it you understand what off-road is and it's suspension and you understand what we're doing um and then the other one is you know I, i'm going to take credit for a, a chunk of this is about um, you know, six years ago, we started youth UTV racing. Um, there had already been a, a movement with youth racing with, with trophy carts, which are these small, you know, just what they sound like. It's a go-kart and a trophy truck mixed together, right? Um, yep. The challenge there was that they quickly got so expensive that only, you know, very wealthy families could afford to race. So it priced out the average family. And, and that was, you know, that was a bummer because this culture was, wasn't founded by wealthy people. There's nothing wrong with wealthy people. We love them. And uh, a lot of them power, you know, our sport, but, you know, this sport was founded by, you know, people building feet up above and jeeps and, you know, and, and, and race cars in their garage and you know racing on motorcycles and, and things like that people who dared to take on the challenge and you you have to have a small army to do it and, and that's what makes it even more fun um but so we started youth racing about six years ago with the utv world championship 
and we're talking about six-year-old kids and up, and it just exploded. And it's continuing to explode and grow today. Um, so now we have this influx of young people who are starting at an extremely young age. And um, by the time they get into their, their teens, um, they're really good, you know? And then when they, they get into their 20s, like we've seen the first wave of these kids come through, you know, with RJ Anderson and Seth Quintero, um, and, uh, um, you know, a few other guys, um, you know, and they're amazing. And, uh, you know, one of the, one of the cool, you'll get a kick out of this, Marty, like one of the coolest experiences, um, I had a couple of years ago was, you know, I was standing next to Cyril Dupre and a few of the Dakar heavies and, um, they had brought over the, the Red Bull junior team, which was, uh, at the time it was Seth Quintero and Mitch Guthrie jr. And they were, you know, these these the the old school heavies were watching these kids finish a stage and they were blown away they they couldn't believe how fast they were you know and you know i i sat there laughing i was like yeah they've been they're that fast because they've been driving since they were six so they're already 10 15 years yeah. into yeah. you know their 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 experience curve so I, i'm really excited for the future um you know both from a you know, how our culture is getting younger and getting more diverse and, and getting more, um, we're spreading out geographically. Um, and then too, with the technology that we're now being able to bring what we do to the masses live, like that's incredible, you know? And, and I think the other thing I would say is, you know, like what you've done with, with, uh, uh, with Crandon, we have control, you know? So it's not, handing our media rights off to a television network that we hope you know shows us in the best light or understands what we're doing you know that that didn't work you know we're not stick and ball sports we are yeah. off-road racing it's it's a particular thing that you have to know and understand and and really have a passion for if you look at you know the the history of successful media with like the nfl you know, that, that wasn't a bunch of accountants who created that stuff. That was yeah. people that were extremely passionate about football yep. who, who wrote it, produced it, directed it, you know, and, and made sure that, you know, they, they created these beautiful narratives about the players, the coaches, you know, the teams, the stadiums, the fans, right? And, you know, that's what we're here to do as well. Yeah, back in 2005, when we released Dust to Glory, the first one, uh, I was part of the production team and, you know, the overwhelming thought or the overwhelming thoughts in the time since, I mean, it's hard to believe it's almost been 20 years ago now, but that there was, I've had five or six people in the last year come up to me and say, I know you're part of that film. I didn't know anything could be that cool. It's taken me years to get to where I'm going to go race it now. I'm going to race it one time. I got from England telling me that here recently. And it's amazing when you curate the content to what it actually really is like Dust of Glory was a, a, a truly authentic film like Endless Summer on any Sunday was, the ha what the results really can be, Absolutely. you know, as opposed to just showing pictures or even having a magazine. It's so much more powerful. Yeah, I mean, th this is, uh, to be, be really honest, this is my brother here doing this, that, you know, little kids, we watched Stuart Barrel Through the Desert on, you know, on, on Jen you know, on a wide world of sport and we were blown away. You know, it was that media that, that was spectacular that we, we saw that we were like, wow, what is that? Really fortunate that we ended up in California. But even before that, you know, as a young kid seeing, you know, the, the imagery on television, it, it, it was a motivator. It was like, you know, you, you have to understand like I lived on a street in Kalamazoo, had a union hall. And when we were kids, they would pay us to. Uh oh, we may have lost Matt. He was driving looks somewhere. Like, so yes, looks like we lost Matt. So we're just going to carry on. And uh, and sorry, we didn't know Matt uh, uh, would be uh, uh, on the road. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we just have to deal <laughs> with with the situation. And. Uh, but, uh, you know, a great promoter and, and doing a great job promoting you know, off-road the way he does. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, uh, 
there was a there was a, a fundamental shift in the early two thousand in the maybe late to to oh Matt is back Matt is okay. back yeah well okay. Matt's back okay we were just talking about the fact that there was a fundamental shift in in the in the late two thousands with what you were doing Matt at Mad Media online social media at that time you know. Dirt Sports Magazine was alive and, and showing some high-end content for the sport, uh, taking some pages off of Racer Magazine, frankly, with, with doing the masterpiece in medals and stuff, but it didn't matter because that's nobody understood how amazing you could drive a car, a trophy truck, a modern trophy truck down Gasoline Alley in Indianapolis or in a Formula One race. In fact, they just did this at, at the Las Vegas Formula One launch with, uh, with Bryce Menzies. And he said that the amount of interest from the, from the garage, the paddock, the four of the one mechanics work on the highest end cars in the world were looking at this trophy truck and were just blown away. They had no idea. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I think that's our biggest challenge is I believe that we have the product. We just have to expose it to, you know, new audiences so that they can see how cool it is. In a nutshell, Matt, on the, on the actual competition side in the desert, I'm just going to put this out there in my mind. We're seeing a time right now where we, we really are breaking up the top end, the high end trophy trucks to the really the, 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 the dedicated have teams and the have nots, right? That the, the, the spread is, split, is spreading again. And there's a whole lot of classes, but really there's a lot of interest, like amazing, like in class 11 Volkswagens. It's like it's gone all over the map. Side by sides are big. You know, in, in the remaining few minutes we have here, what is your kind of 10,000 foot view on, on the debt sport on the desert side specifically and on what's happening and kind of where it's going. Yeah. Well, like I said before, we've been given, you know, one of the biggest gifts our culture has ever had, which is UTDs. Right. And those are bringing a ton of people in. Um, it's, it's almost a race ready vehicle. I mean, it's put safety equipment on it and you can come race with us. Um, so that's a huge thing, but to the point of class 11s and, and some of the other classes, you know, I, look, I think that people are always gonna wanna be and build a car. And that, that's just something that, well, I don't think will ever go away. I mean, if you, you look at the effort and the cost that, that goes into a class 11, it doesn't make sense, but neither does racing really, it's, it's no. passion, right? No. So, um, you know, and then we have, you know, a huge growth in, in trophy truck spec. Um, we have some separation that's coming with, you know, four wheel drive trophy trucks and two wheel drive trophy trucks. Um, you know, so it, it's interesting and it's exciting to be, to be frank. It's like, you know, everybody goes, Oh, aren't you worried about it? And I'm like, no, I'm not worried about it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm enthusiastic about the idea that we're the only form of, of racing that has truly unlimited racing. And I think that that's important because that pushes the, that pushes the envelope. Now on that top end, do you have to have a certain level of money to come play? Yeah. That's part come of the win, deal. to come win for sure. Yes. No. Yeah. You know, that that's part of the deal, but, but also the thing I'd point out, Marty is like, look at what just happened this year. It's, you know, you have McMillan's, you have the Bryce Menzies and Tavo Vidolsa's and, you know, really well um, financed teams with a lot of knowledge and Larry Rossler's there spanking them in a obsolete trophy truck good point you know? and so that's the beauty of our sport is that you know you can have all the money in the world and you can you know have a perfect plan but that all goes to hell during the race and you know one four dollar part can end your day a rock can end your day lap traffic can end your day uh you know in, in baja it's even gnarlier you know animals etc so we we're the mma of racing you know, you know, people ask me all the time going into our race, hey, who do you think is going to win? And I'm like, you know what? Every year, the person I pick to win does not win. You know, last year, would I have picked Kyle Jurgensen to win? Not, not even, right? right? But he ran an extremely smart race and was extremely disciplined. And he was there in the end, you know? So I, I think that um, we're like, we're going to continue to see more growth. Um, you know, in multiple classes, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, now because of the launch of the Bronco, there's a, there's a bunch of Broncos that are coming racing. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I think we have a long ways to go. Well, Matt, listen, um, we're kind of reached the end of our seven, seven here, but 
want to thank you for coming on. Like I said, we're, we're kind of brothers in arms. You know, you, you taught me a lot. You know, I, I kind of follow all the stuff you and your brothers and your, your staff is doing. And, you know, really proud to have you, you have us be kind of wrapping up this race week and, and keeping off road racing in the mainstream of, of the automotive world and the, on the, on the racing world as well. Yeah, no, thank you guys for the opportunity. And Matt, uh, thank you look, for joining us. I know you're, you've got a busy schedule. Thank no, you. It's not that. I just need a Starlink on my head and I'll do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Glad it worked out. All right. Thank you, guys. Francis, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, you know, safe travel. Registering on EPAR Trade is easy. To start, click on the Join for Free button on the homepage. First, search your company to see if it's already in our database. If you see your company on the list, click on it to select it. Then, choose Claim Company if you are one of the decision makers, an owner, marketing person, or main company contact. Or choose Join Company if you are an employee, and press Continue. If you couldn't find your company in our database, select Register a New Company. On the following page, fill out your name, email, phone number, job title, and choose a secure password. If you chose Register a New Company, you'll need to choose your business type. Select Supplier if you're looking to display products or services and connect with buyers. Choose Racing Business if you're looking to source new parts and connect with suppliers. Choose Race Team if you own or are a member of a professional race team. Then, enter your company name. Please provide a website, Facebook page, or LinkedIn if you have one, and choose to either claim or join the company. You can view and agree to our terms of use here. If you'd like to receive our weekly newsletter, choose Accept. Finally, click Register Now and your registration will be submitted for approval. An email will be sent to your inbox. Please confirm your email address and you will be approved shortly. Welcome to ePartrade.